Hello guys, welcome to the first lesson in the Ultimate Arduino Beginner's Guide. This series will hopefully teach you the how to code the Arduino to such a level you'll be able to make your own projects. But we'll, each video will show you some code, show you a wiring diagram and you will take part as well. And then at the end I will set you a couple of challenges to complete by yourself. Um, always make sure that you do these challenges because these these challenges really test your knowledge. Right, so this lesson we are going to do about what is the Arduino, different types of the Arduino, what you will need for this series, installing the Arduino IDE, and then finally talk about the projects that we're going to be doing in this course. So first of all, what is the Arduino? If you were to go onto the Arduino website, or any website that's talking about the Arduino, you would find a description similar to this. Now, let's just go through what this means. Arduino is an open source computer hardware and software company, project and user community that designs and manufactures microcontroller based kits for building digital devices that can inter and interactive objects that can sense and control the physical world. Well, let's have a little look at what this means. Open source. Open source means there's no restrictions to it. It means that you can do anything you want to it, and the Arduino has not put any restrictions onto what you can do. Now, um, the computer hardware, these are the actual boards. And then software company, that means the Arduino IDE that you make, that you put your code in on the computer. And the user community is the um, the website where people can share ideas and help each other out and then the micro based microcontroller based kits well these are the microcontrollers and as it says here they um interact with objects that can sense and control the physical world you can program you program the arduino and it has electronic components attached to it and you can control them electronic components and it can interact and sense stuff and you can make your own projects okay let's have a little look at the UNO board you can buy um, all it's got it's got the digital pins the power and the analog this is a diagram so you've got here you got here the power bit the analog and the digital right the, dig the power pins the, um, these are constantly sending out a flow of electricity. Unlike these, where you can control whether you send out electricity or not, these are constantly sending out a flow of electricity. This is constantly sending out 5 volts. This is constantly sending out 3.3 .3 volts. These are constantly sending out ground. Now, this is voltage in, and then this is reset. Now, you may have noticed that the reset pin is a reset button. The reset button, if you press it, it will start the program over again. It will just reset the program. If you uh, apply current to the reset pin, it will completely wipe whatever's on the Arduino board. And here, you've got the analog in pins. Now, this, when you're using analog devices, you need to be able to convert it to a digital reading that the Arduino code can understand. Analog pins, you have an analog device, like let's put let's say for example a potentiometer. A potentiometer controls the amount of resistance in the circuit. It has two pins either side of it and then a middle. The two pins either side of it will be connected to five volt and ground and the middle pin will be attached to an analog. Now what the analog would do is it would read however much electricity is going into the middle pin and it will convert it to digital so that the Arduino would know and then we could respond to that. For example we could have a little on um, we could have on our computer a little ongoing thing telling us how much voltage is going through it. Right now this bit here AT Mega 328 microcontroller this is what actually runs the programs. This is the this is the actual thing really. 
If I haven't explained that too clearly, I'm sorry, but that's that's the actual thing that runs the programs. Um, you don't need to know that is. We've gone over the reset button. Right here, we, here we've got uh, naught and one. Now you may notice that all of these two to thirteen have not got um, these two things: tx and rx. Rx is receive. No, sorry. Yeah, well, receive. It receives stuff, serial in. TX, transmit serial out. So, yeah, this can receive stuff, this can transmit stuff. And then here, you've got digital pins 2 to 13. Now, what you can do when you're writing code is you can declare these as inputs or outputs. An output can either you can control whether you send out 5 volts or don't send out 5 volts. For example, if on our fourth project we're going to be making an LED light up with a button. If you got a button and you press down on it and you had 5 volt and 3.3 volt either side and you add the other side of the button attached to one of these, it could read that there's electricity going through and you could say if one of these equals high, which means there's a lot of electricity. Turn 13 high. And then you could have an LED going to 13 um, and ground. <coughs> and then there you'd have your project. And if it's a, so that's basically explained the input and output. Digital ground is very similar to ground here. And then analog reference pin. I'm not going to explain that now. Okay, USB plug. So when you're writing code, you need to upload the code from your computer to your Arduino. You plug it in using a USB. This is the USB. Open. Oh. This is the USB that you um, plug it into from your computer. And then here you've got external power supply. So you might not always want it to be plugged into your computer. You might want to plug it into a socket or perhaps a battery. Um, now this is what you do to do that. Use an this is an external power supply thing and you just plug it in from a battery or your computer and it powers your Arduino as your Arduino does not need to be connected to your computer all the time. You only need to connect it to your computer to put the original code on. <coughs> <coughs> okay, right, moving on now. The different types of Arduino. Right, this, I'm, I'm not going to explain these, I just want to show you that it's not just the Uno. Okay, here's the Arduino Galileo. This is the Arduino Yun. This is the Arduino BT. This is the Arduino Mega. So I'm going to show you, but it just shows that there's different types. And this one here, the Mega, is a lot more complicated than the Uno. It's got a lot more power. Right, this is the main part of the video that I want that I wanted to do it for. What you will need. Okay, you'll need an Arduino Uno. We've already been through that, but you will need that or higher, and you could use a clone. The actual Arduino is about 15 to 20 pounds. A clone you could get as cheap as a fiver, and they are extremely similar, but the Arduino is much higher quality, and I do recommend getting a proper Arduino so we make sure that we're on the same page. A full size breadboard. Um, now, breadboards are used for prototyping circuits and stuff. You um, can put components into these. Now this is only a half size but I'm just going to show you what a breadboard does. If you apply current to this, normally you'd apply 5 volts to this one and ground to this one and then all the way down here you'd have 5 volts and then all the way down here you'd have ground and then you can, for example, if you wanted 5 volts over here on your thing, you just do a wire from there to there, and then you'd have 5 volts there. Or if you want to ground there to there, you put it there. And it's the same with these. If you play any current to any of these pins, it runs all the way down and back up. Okay, here you've got the actual thing where you do the circuits. You've got this line in the middle which separates the two. You've got two sides. If you apply current to any of these holes, it runs up in rows like this, columns more like. If you apply current to here, it would run up here, here, and then here. 
that's how the bread bulb works and then that's only a half size this is a full size and this is probably best that you get a full size okay jumper wires um leds a potentiometer maybe two resistors a servo and regular motor an lcd screen we've put here 2 by 16 or 4 by 20. this is a 2 by 16 because it's got two down going vertically 16 going horizontally now although lcds are on the pricey side you should get one because well it's much better than any other thing you can buy because lcd screens are much cooler than leds and if you were going to get one get a 4x20 really because it just adds that extra capability Come, yeah more stuff you can do uh, push buttons a battery snap and 9 volt battery a uh, 4x4 keypad you don't need everything in this list by the way it's just stuff I recommend getting you won't need all of it for the series H bridges a motion sensor we're going to be making a motion sensing alarm by the way temperature sensor a piezo buzzer tilt switch photo resistors opto coupler and that's it that's all you need <coughs> um now in fairness in fairness i have um put a lot of stuff there you don't need it all you only need a few things out of that really well not a few but there's a few essentials that you need but after that everything's just optional but then again if you don't have some things some things we will be doing videos and you'll be taking part of basically you will need the components but if you don't have them you can always just watch the video and watch me do it but it will be hard so you know get one really okay what projects will we be doing and how to install the arduino ide right the projects is after this right, so what you do is you go to www.arduino.cc okay <clears throat> and then you click, you go up here and it says download you click that and that'll take you to this screen which is download the arduino software you click on windows installer and then it'll have a window here contribute to the arduino software um click on just download and then it'll have this window here you press save 